Hi everybody, this is Mark Hoyt here. This is part of my Ethical Jewelry 101 series. It's a companion to my Ethical Jewelry Exposé, which is titled Ethical Jewelry Exposé Lies, Damn Lies, and Conflict-Free Diamonds. Now, what exactly is Ethical Jewelry? I'm going to give you a definition that's going to be a little bit different than what you will read in most places, particularly in North America. There are three main principles. First principle is people of the land must control and benefit from the resources of their land. What I'm essentially saying is that ethical jewelry should really be focusing on local economic development in the global south. What it involves is small scale projects, projects that have strong local economic impact. For example, a mining cooperative of women in Tanzania or fair trade gold. This is really what we must source from if we want to create a real ethical jewelry movement. Ethical jewelry must be small scale, producer centered, and must actually benefit the people on the land. The second principle, there have to be standards in context to human rights, labor, and the environment. It's not enough that we simply buy from these small producers. There are about 150 million of them, and right now, the vast majority of small scale producers often live in poverty or they have huge environmental issues. We need to have standards and principles. We need to support them to have best practices. Right now, these people don't have access to international pricing, as this interview I did in Africa, specifically Tanzania, shows. We don't even know where our gold is going. We, right. don't, know, we don't even know whether we are getting the correct prices for what we are producing. We basically have to have fairness. There can be a huge, huge impact, as my interview with Tina Mawasha shows right here. What is going to be the effect that you will see on the ground. I so will see them use better technology more because now they will have they will not be concentrating on put or putting food on the table. I will see the environment change. I will see less people more healthy, not polluted by mercury. The fair trade standards are addressing all those issues. Now I'd like to talk to you about the third principle, which is traceability and transparency. In other words, we have to know what happens all the way from the mine all the way to the jewelry counter where things are sold. The problem is that if you're merely talking about traceability and transparency, it does not cover what exactly is going on at the mine. In other words, a big company can be traceable and transparent, but they can have a mine in some developing world country which is actually incredibly toxic or violates human rights, and they can still maintain that traceability and transparency because they control the minerals from their mine to the market. Another issue is that traceability and transparency can be a cover-up for previous atrocities. This is just an introduction to these topics. If you want to learn more, you can read my Ethical Jewelry Exposé. It's on my website. This gives you a basic idea, though, of what Ethical Jewelry is. People of the land benefiting from the resources of the land, principles around labor and environment for those people, traceable and transparent, those are the three core principles.